This is Rob Adams reporting. In the past several months, we've covered each and every Board of Health meeting since the last local election. We've also conducted painstaking research and numerous interviews. All of this is centered towards understanding what exactly has gone wrong at Pembroke's Board of Health. What follows is a short 10 minute piece devoted to that problem in understanding exactly how we got here. Feel free to pause where necessary and even rewind as needed. There's a lot here, but trust me, it's all good to know. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna repeat myself again. The situation that went down, how involved it was or how whatever situation took place, because I was not a privy to it, it rocked this, this department to its knees. So if there are any ill feelings, any uncomfortable situations that still exist due to those three or four years, however long it was, has nothing to do with this existing sitting board. From my recollection and my understanding, in 2009, the Board of Health was essentially dysfunctional. Um, and did the Board of Selectmen at that point step in and cede control of the trash collection, or was that something that the Board of Health saw fit to do? The Board of Health actually requested that the uh, Selectmen and the Town Administrator take over supervision and operation of the day-to-day -day work of the employees. This board needs to run under the law. We are not running under the law right now. We're not running for the people. If we were running for the people, we would have control over our department. The accusations, if you will, of um, Gail McSweeney that the, um, the Board of Health is supposed to have control of the uh, rubbish pickup and so forth. There are a number of cities and towns that do it with their board of selectmen or their city council, as the case may be. And it's not illegal, as, as I'm sure you know. It's, it's perfectly legal and it's perfectly reasonable to do it the way we've been doing it successfully and cost-effectively for the past seven years. I'm sorry, Gail has handed us, um, it, it's not a public document. Um, it is. It's from town council, from the selectmen back in 2007. And it was during the very office, and this was a decision from Judge Duke. That okay. would be nine years ago? Nine you, years ago. You gotta read that. It's from a judge. Which? And it was requested by the selectmen and the town administrator. Okay, so I just have a question. Why are you bringing this up? Why are you handing this out? Because the judge emphatically states the powers of the Board of Health. Let's start talking about things that have to deal with the people of Pembroke. We have ticks, we have Zika, we have, uh, we have variances and septics and people who want to add on to their property to increase their value. This, to me, I don't care about right now. I care about serving the people of Pembroke. If you okay, serve if, them, you got to serve them by the law. What in God's name are we not doing that is against the law? I've been told that our employees belong and they're under the guise of the administrator. Yeah, you know, we live in a town of Pembroke that is strapped for money that we have to cut certain things out of our budget. In this office, I under right, stupid. I know. But we do not have the help in this board of, in this building, not to share resources. We are a community. Communities. The board of health is autonomous, it's not shared. It's not about this office. It's not about being narrow sighted and we are an island of the board of health. We are not an island of the board of health. I'm an employee that serves the taxpayers of Pembroke. And if that means I have to work above and beyond my job, I'm totally all right with that. And I will do whatever I can to ensure that the taxpayers get the, the benefits and services they deserve. I treat every person yeah. that walks at that window as if that was my mother, father, brother, sister, or child that might be buying a house or doing a home renovation or need a new septic system or selling a home. I treat them the way I would want my family to be treated by anyone in my position your government is the only one that you've already paid to look out for your behalf. 
I take that very seriously. I think that that's what I'm paid to do is to use every knowledge and every resource I have to ensure the best possible outcome for Pembroke and for every citizen in it. It's, it's really that simple. It's a very simple philosophy that's served me really well. Gail McSweeney had tried to intimidate Lisa Cullity and uh, Carol Murata, who are two employees of the Board of Health, um, by looking at their contracts, by sending emails to the chair, and basically by uh, just bullying in general. And Carol has resigned effective uh, in September, and Lisa is, um, has filed a complaint with the Attorney General's office, as has Carol. Yeah, she's a former she's a former employee with a, a bad taste in her mouth for the uh, for the town and for the board of health. To be sure that we're not going to allow a hostile work environment. We're not going to allow somebody to come in and bully our employees. We're not going to come in and let somebody uh, come in and, and have their own agenda and, and do things that we know are not correct. To the police personnel, I found it a complete abuse of power and an intimidation factor, and I'm not going to be intimidated. Well, I think it was the opposite. That's what you need to realize. I she was intimidated by you. No, you, Jan. You, you, you have to you, understand that. You have to give me a reason why she was intimidated Because she was by scared me. to death of you. For what reason? That's her own personal business, but oh, you do understand that, But right? you have to divulge that. I'm an elected official now, so if you're going to tell me an employee is calling in police detail, because she's afraid of me, address you have what the concerns are. Okay. Two years prior, I never went. The police never came. You just can't arbitrarily write things. The other police report, uh, I was fired. I was not fired. My, uh, my position was eliminated. There's a big difference between being fired and being eliminated. Um, there were three other false reports in there. So that's a problem with the police station. Lisa? This is not your concern. This is a board's issue right now. I would ask you to please remain quiet. I'll leave until you're done. That's fine with me. The topics that were being discussed outside the meeting were topics raised within the open meeting. Um, the question of the secretary not wanting to be contacted on her personal time at her personal home and on her personal cell phone was discussed during an open meeting. If it was discussed during the meeting and anyone at the meeting had concerns, why on earth didn't they voice that during the open meeting? So that led to me filing a complaint um, with the Attorney General regarding the open meeting law as based on the information I was given, I, I suspected that the open meeting law could have been violated. The second part is my involvement in the trash and recycling program in this town was also discussed in that open meeting. And I made point of asking the board, do you want me to continue to work at this level on this project? The two members said yes, the third member said nothing. If there were concerns, again, why wasn't that voiced during an open meeting? Why is it voiced in private emails back and forth with one member of the board? It, it, as a new member of the, the Board of Health or a new member of town government, have you found that the open meeting laws have been somewhat constrictive of your behavior or somewhat hard to, to adhere to? Has it been, has it been something that that's, that's you've had to be completely cognizant of 24-7 whenever you're in the That's a great question, role? actually. Um, it hasn't been a problem, it hasn't been something that I've had to keep in my mind 24-7, but being on a smaller board, a board of just three, if you, have a, if you have two people and you're discussing board of health business outside of a board of health meeting, you could potentially be in violation of the open meeting law. I say potentially. So the fact that it just takes two, the open meeting violations were brought the charges were brought by our health agent, Lisa Cullity, and um, our administrator, Carol Murata, against our newest Board of Health member, as well as the chairman of the board. The two of them were charged with violating the open meeting laws. In other words, having discussion either about issues that should have taken place at the Board of Health meeting or having discussions about persons who weren't part of that discussion. Here's the thing, when it comes down to government, you should be overly transparent. When an item is discussed in an open meeting and the topic is considered closed and moved on, it's not appropriate to bring up that topic again outside of an open meeting. It's also not appropriate to discuss an employee outside of an open meeting when they've been notified. We had a good, steady, undisrupted, consistent 
uh, Board of Health up until Gail McSweeney got elected to the board in April. She has since cost us over $7,000 in lawyers' fees and in police details, and it has no end in sight at this point. She violated the law, the open meeting law, and she's continuing to be disruptive and frankly should resign for the good of the town and for the, uh, the good of the board. We have no available cash to spend what I predict will be $20,000 or so by the time we're done. It's over six, as I say now, and that's only with two months running. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't include the month of August. So, um, in, in terms of the new charges that are yeah. that are starting to bubble up through the system, yeah, what, we, we let, don't let, have that kind of money. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. In terms of in terms of authority over the board, um, let's say she sees fit to continue her tenure there. Um, what what's the solution? Well, the solution is for her to get on board and to stop the uh, nonsense with the uh, personal vendetta that she apparently has towards the employees of the department. And I, I don't see that happening. I, I see somebody who's got a, an agenda and is working towards, you know, evening old scores and that type of thing. And there's, there's no place in public uh, life for that. And thanks for watching. Please note that we repeatedly sought comment from Gail McSweeney for this piece. However, due to advice from legal counsel, she refused these invitations. Should you have any questions, comments, or just general feedback, please feel free to leave a comment below. They are all welcomed. Or alternatively, feel free to email me at the address shown. Reporting for Pembroke Town News, this is Rob Adams signing off. Thanks again.